All right, everybody. Welcome to spring football 2024. Uh, an exciting time, obviously. I know we're rolling right from basketball season into football season, but exciting times here. Uh, we're going to talk to Coach Huff here in just a second. Did want to point out uh, congratulations are in order to him. He was named as a member of the Board of Trustees for the American Football Coaches Association today. That release went out at 11 o'clock. And without further ado, I'll let you talk to him. Coach Charles Huff. How's everybody doing? Uh, really excited to see you guys again. That means that uh, the evaluation of football has started. You guys are the key components of that. Um, obviously, before we get going, um, a tremendous amount of positive going on right now for Marshall Athletics, Marshall University as a whole. Um, obviously, the women's basketball team um, just finished a phenomenal run um, in the NCAA tournament. Um, I think um, women's sports as a whole is taking a huge um, step forward, which is something that is probably long overdue. Um, but definitely glad that our women and our coaching staff and our players um, are getting the recognition that they deserve. Um, obviously, baseball and softball kicking off their seasons. Um, it's, it's interesting or exciting to say that, you know, baseball is being played in the stadium. Um, probably long overdue, but um, those who have been there, um, I've been to a couple games, phenomenal atmosphere. Coach Bills and his team are doing a phenomenal job as well. Um, along with softball, the renovations that have been going on um, here holistically, um, the Brad Smith Business Center up and running, um, a lot of positive. Um, when we started this journey three plus years ago, we talked about a lot of the positive movement that was going to happen. Obviously, we would all love it to happen faster and sooner. Um, but I think if you really take a step back and look, there's been a lot of positive that has happened um, over the last few years here at Marshall, and there's much more to come. So um, definitely excited about that. Day one of spring ball, um, the excitement is through the roof. Um, what we've got to be able to do is um, match that excitement with a uh, very intentional focus on the task at hand. Um, obviously, everyone can get excited to get out on the field uh, for the first time of this 2024 season. Everyone can get excited about the potential that we have and all the teams across the country have. But ultimately, we've got to find a way to maximize these 15 practices um, and this basically a month of, of football. Um, and that's what our focus has been since um, the clock hit zero on the last game through recruiting. Uh, the fourth, port, fourth quarter program uh, was probably one of the best that we've had. Um, and that was just based on having much more intentional focus on what we wanted to get accomplished from a body composition standpoint to a mental and physical toughness standpoint to a stamina and conditioning standpoint. Um, Coach Ben Ashford and his staff have done a phenomenal job of preparing our guys in that program and in that phase. Um, obviously, with the new rules, we're able to pair some of those workouts with walkthroughs and meetings, which was really good for us, um, being able to get a jump on a new offense um, and being able to adjust a lot um, on defense and special teams. Um, so um, transitioning to phase two, um, really big piece of what we're trying to do is, is understand um, how do you merge 40 new some odd players um, into what you call a team. Um, I've done a lot more um, personal research on doing that. I've done a lot more uh, personal studies and communicating with different coaches in different eras um, or different areas. I spent a lot of time. I got a chance to spend some time um, this all season with Shaka Smart um, and just kind of picking his brain on the whole culture, team development um, piece. Obviously, we're, all, we're coaching different sports, but we're still coaching 18 to 22 year olds and we're still coaching in the same new age of college athletics. Um, so got a chance to spend some time with him, got a chance to talk to a bunch of different coaches at different levels. Um, not to say, OK, well, we need to do exactly what they're doing, but how do we take um, successful models and pair it with what we're doing? Um, so that was really good for me. Um, obviously, this 2024 season is going to be different. Uh, we, we're at the point now where 
Uh, we're beyond the quote unquote getting ready to or understanding the conference. Uh, we, we've got to drop the ball and go compete now. Um, and that's what our focus has been um, since the beginning of this phase and phase one. Um, obviously, we still are in the development phase, right? We're still dealing with 18 to 22 year old uh, kids. Um, that need development, and they come in at all different phases, freshmen, sophomores, transfers, juniors, a whole nine. Um, but it's time for the rubber to meet the road in our program. Um, and that doesn't mean we win every game. That doesn't mean we don't make some mistakes. But uh, we, we're, we're living in reality now. You know, and we're living in you did or you didn't. And here's what you need to do to improve. Um, not a lot of patting on the back, not a lot of friendly, let's have a hug. Um, it's, it's, it's cutthroat time for us. And that doesn't mean we're in a panic mode. That doesn't mean that, oh, it's break or bust type of deal. That just means now we've gotten to the point to where our culture, our process, the organization, everyone in the organization knows and understands the expectations. Everyone knows and understands how we do things now. Now it's starting, now it's time to start doing those things consistently. Um, and obviously that starts with me as the head coach, trickles down to the staff, and then down to the players. Now, the beauty of where we are now in college athletics is you start over every year, right? You don't have the buildup of, hey, this is four years of the same guys who've been in the same program. So what we've got to do is we've got to um, speed up that process, right? We've got a month to, to do it now in spring ball. We've had uh, about two months to do it in the fourth quarter program, obviously going into the summer and into the season. Um, but that's where we are. I feel really good about where we are. Um, you know, taking the next step to be successful in the Sun Belt is the goal, right? We understand the conference now. Uh, we've been in it for two years. Uh, we know the challenges that face that we're going to face. Uh, we've got a better gauge of, you know, the environments and the uh, competitiveness that is going to be across the board week in and week out. Um, that doesn't mean we walk in and, and win every game by 50. That just means when we walk into different arenas now, we have an understanding of what we're walking into. Um, obviously, there's still some teams on our schedule um, that we have not played, but we have seen them in crossover and that type of deal. So I feel much better about the understanding of the conference from the player level. Um, I feel much better now about the understanding of the conference from the coaching level. Um, and what we need to do to continue to move forward um, is a big piece of that. So entering phase two, um, building this team is what we're, we're, we're trying to do here in this, this phase, right? Um, who are they? Uh, we don't know. You know, they look really good running around in shorts and running around bags. Um, but there's a football physical component that we're going to get to see in these next 15 practices. Um, and what we've got to do as an organization is we've got to figure out who this team is. How do they handle adversity? How do they handle um, installs, how do they handle everyday life? Um, we've got all new kids. Um, so just think about it. Take your kids at home, send them out and bring in brand new kids. And you've got, you know, less than six months to kind of get them ready to go. And that's where we're at. Um, we've done a much uh, more intentional job of building relationships. I think it still comes down to relationships. You can't motivate, you can't improve, you can't develop anyone at any level without a relationship. Um, and what we've had to do from a coaching staff standpoint is be a lot more intentional um, about developing those relationships because we don't have the time. We didn't sit in these kids' homes, um, you know, when they were in high school and tell their parents, you know, all the great things we were going to be able to do. Um, some of these guys we got on speed dating terms, you know, sit down with them for a meal or two here, and then all of a sudden they come on a visit and they're in. Um, so because of that, we still got to develop the relationship. It's like a marriage. It doesn't matter if you married your high school sweetheart or you met someone, you know, in college or you met someone on your job or throughout your life. Ultimately, it comes down to developing that relationship as we go. So I'm excited about that. Um, I'm also excited to find out who these guys are, right? Who are the leaders? Um, who are the guys that can replicate the details and the fundamentals um, and the execution consistently, right? Everyone looks good running around, you know, going through the walkthroughs and everyone, yeah, I got it, I got it. Um, but now we're going to put a helmet on and someone's going to have to get hit, you know, and then after that you're going to have to get hit again. Um, and you're going to have to respond. And I think that's ultimately what these 15 opportunities are going to give us a chance to figure out is how, how are our guys going to respond? How are we as coaches going to respond? Um, the new coaching staff, um, I feel really good about them. 
Um, you know, hats off. A much appreciation to the guys who were able to move on. Um, the guys that were here last year helped us build to where we are, but the new coaching staff brings in um, a new energy, um, some new ideas. Obviously, it's still 11-on-11 11 11 football. You're trying to score touchdowns and stop the other team from scoring touchdowns, but just new ideas, new ways to package some things. Um, obviously, offensively, making the switch. Um, so we'll be triple option. We'll look like Army and, and Navy, and we'll run it 72 times and throw it five and win a bunch of games 10-6. to six. So hope everybody's ready for now. Um, obviously, you know, making a switch to, you know, to air raid offense. And, and air raid offense, obviously, you know, it's known for throwing the ball. But if you really do the research in – traditional air raid offenses, it's pretty a pretty balanced offense. Um, they run the ball as much as they throw the ball. Um, the concepts, the tempo, um, the simplicity of the system allows the players to go out and make plays, and that's what we've seen in the last two weeks going through walkthroughs, going through you know install and meetings and talking to the players as they walk through the hallways. Um, that's been the positive about this thing. Um, a lot of excitement offensively. Um, like I say, we haven't played anybody and we haven't, you know, not got a first down. But there's a lot of confidence on the offense. I think that starts with Coach Deggy. Um, you'll get a chance to talk with him. Um, he has a quiet confidence about him. You know, he trusts his system. He trusts his teaching ability. Um, he's done a great job of, of um, intentionally developing relationships, not only with the new players, but with the players that have been here. You know, and that's a big piece. You know, we've had a lot of coaching turnover, um, you know, in our tenure. Um, I probably got a crash course at that working at the University of Alabama where it was a new coach or new coaches in every year. Um, so I got to see how Coach Saban managed that with the players and the staff. Um, and I think the transition has been smooth. Obviously, defensively, we're going to be similar. But I think, again, if you think back to year one, we were much different in year two when Coach Guidry had an opportunity to kind of really get to find out who are these guys? You know, what can they handle? What are they good at? Um, and I think Coach Seymour has been able to do that. You know, we've gone back and taken a lot of stuff out, put some stuff in, simplified some things, um, made some adjustments on some things that may have been cloudy. Uh, we've also had an opportunity to go back and say, okay, how do teams attack us? Um, because teams were attacking the defense that was top five in the country. Well, some of those things we thought were really, really good. Well, they're really, really good until teams start to complement them. So we've been able to kind of go back and look and say, okay, what do we need to keep? What do we need to add? And then also being able to be able to teach the fundamentals of, of the defense to the new guys, right? Because they, they're not as, as versed in the defense um, as, as some of the old guys. So a really good opportunity for every player on the roster. Um, not many times do you truly go into um, a spring or a season – um, and say, okay, well, everybody's got a chance to compete for a spot. Legitimately, they do, because no one knows the offense, right? So it doesn't matter if you've played, you know, 70 snaps or you've played 300 snaps. Um, you got an opportunity to learn the offense and go out and play. And I think as a player, um, that's exciting because it's not – well, Logan Osborne's the starting center because, you know, Logan's played here for, you know, five, six years, and he's going to be the center. He knows all the calls. He knows all the adjustments. He's got to start learning just like the freshmen do, which has been good for him. And I'm just using him as an example of one of the older guys, some of the guys that have played a lot of football around here on both sides of the ball. Um, being able to be forced to go back and relearn um, is really good. Um, you know, you think about your job, if you had to go back and relearn how to do your job every year. Um, it would be a challenge, which in football and sports, um, that challenge is exciting because it gives everyone an opportunity. There's no person sitting in any one of these position rooms saying, oh, well, I got to wait my turn. You know, if you want to be the starting whatever on offense, learn the playbook, go out and execute with fundamentals and details and consistently do it. Bang, you're the guy. Um, same thing on defense. We've got a lot of new faces on defense. Um, a lot of the things that we've done in the past have kind of been modified. So a lot of the quote unquote carryover, um, we had to start back um, from scratch, which as a head coach, it's good because you actually get to truly coach and not assume, hey, this guy's played here five years. He knows X, Y, and Z. Um, or this guy's been here three years. We know what he's going to do. Now you get a chance to see um, all of these guys be able to go out and compete. So that's really good. Um, and then finally, we, we've got to you know, be able to maximize these next 15 days 
um, better than any other team in the country. That doesn't mean we have to, you know, be perfect. That doesn't mean we have to all of a sudden grow eight inches and, you know, put on 50 pounds. But we've got to maximize these 15 practices this month of football better than anyone in the country. And that's not just football. That's taking care of your body. That's managing your life outside of football. That's minimizing the distractions. That's having intentional focus on what you and we want to accomplish out of this year. Um, so um, excited, but also um, very optimistic about what we're going to get you know, as we start to put these things on the field. Questions? Coach, uh, in today's modern game now, uh, and you know, football has kind of changed, and, and guys who work their way up through the scout team and then on special teams and find with because of the portal and all that, is there more of a sense of urgency for the players and the staff to kind of identify who we have to go with? Is yeah, I think it is. I think it's. I think it speeds up everybody, right? It speeds up the players because they know, you know, my clock is ticking, and if I can't prove myself or earn a spot or earn a role here, um, you. The, the thought comes into your head, you know, do I transfer and maybe go somewhere else? Um, obviously, the guys that have transferred in, um, their clock is ticking. You know, hey, I was at you know, school X, Y, or Z. Um, for whatever reason, I, it didn't work out, didn't get the opportunity. I felt like this was a better spot. Well, I can't come here and, and, you know, and sit a year. You know, I can't come here and sit two years. So I think holistically, players and coaches, right, Obviously, we want to retain all of these players and all of the players we recruited from the high school ranks and the transfer portal. We've told them we're bringing you in here to play. Um, so it's our job to create a vehicle or a lane or a role for every player on the team. Um, I do still think there's, you know, there's the development piece, right? Some of these guys are, you know, just off the prom. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, but the, the, the clock has sped up, um, and that makes your coaching approach speed up. Um, you're no longer saying, okay, in a year this guy will be. It's now, okay, what can he do for us now while he's developing? And I think when you take that approach, um, it includes a lot more players, which keeps their attention, um, and it makes them feel like they're progressing. It's hard to sit on the scout team, you know, for a year, the old days where you kind of grinded it out. You know, I think that model taught a little bit of patience and adversity. Um, that's no longer the case. Um, so we've got to figure out a way to still teach patience and adversity and show them progress. And I think um, a lot of the young guys getting an opportunity, special teams-wise, whatever that may look like, um, and then throwing them in the fire. You know, And if they can compete at the level consistently, it's our job as coaches to find a role for them. Coach, something we've talked about every year is just how far you've progressed starting from year one to year hmm. two to year three. Man. Year four. Where are you at personally, and did you specifically go after certain things in your personal development, address strengths to address weaknesses? Did you do anything different as the process continues? Yeah. Um, well, one, when I started this deal, I, I wanted to win every game by 50, and I wanted to run the score up, and I really didn't care about anything but winning. Um, and I say that, and it's only been four years, um, but now – I you really get to see the impact you have on these kids. And yes, don't get me wrong, I want to win every game. Um, but now the gratification for me is when you see these guys come back for pro day and they say, coach, being here was the best decision of my life. Or the process that we went through, coach, it prepared me when I got in the gym with all these other quote unquote big school guys. Um, so the gratification for me has changed, right? Yes, I still want to win. I'm still ultra competitive. Um, but now it's not looking at the scoreboard and saying, well done. It's listening to these guys. It's watching these guys have an opportunity to go to the Senior Bowl, go to the Pro Bowl. It's seeing some of these guys come back and say, hey, I'm working at such and such company now. And, and some of the core values that, you know, you taught us is what gets me going or is what's allowed me to move up in the profession. It's some of these guys who come in from other schools and saying, coach, I didn't have this type of relationship with the head coach at my previous school. Um, so that kind of is the gratification now, right? Four years into it, you, if you guys remember, me and Butch Davis almost got into a, a, a fist fight because we threw a go ball at the end of the game. You know, that was year one, you know, hothead Coach Huff. Um, I think my interactions with 
other staff members, not necessarily in this building, but holistically, you know, um, I got a chance to sit down with some of the economic professors and deans to talk about NIL and what it looks like for Marshall, right? Because they have an expertise in economics. I have an expertise in coaching football. Well, I ain't the greatest math student, okay? So I'm going to be honest with you guys. I took it three or four times. I really liked the class. I kept taking it. Um, so to allow them to use their expertise um, to help me, right? So my gratification has changed a little bit. Um, my approach to, you know, it's not just in this building and we'll fix it. It's going to take everybody. It's going to take everybody in this community. It's going to take all of the expertise and knowledge on this university. Um, I wouldn't have reached out to another coach and asked, you know, hey, what are you doing? You know, how do you do this or how are you handling this in year one? I, you know, for lack of better words, I was like, hey, I know what I'm doing. Um, that's changed, you know. I mean, talking to Shaka Smart and just asking him, you know, what, what, do you, what do you do, you know what I mean? And saying, okay, that's what he does. How does that fit where we're at? Do we need to add that? Do we not need to add that? Um, I think my approach has changed in recruiting, right? We're still recruiting um, really, really good football players, but now they've got to fit Marshall. Um, and that's not, you know, A or B. It's just they've got to fit Marshall. Um, Marshall's a special place. We have a special process here. And it doesn't matter how fast you are, how – big you are, how tall you are, if you don't fit holistically what Marshall stands for, you're not going to make it here. Um, and, and we went back over this offseason and looked at all the guys we recruited and the guys that are no longer here. Why are they no longer here? Um, and 99% of it was they weren't a good fit. Um, we've had some guys that moved on for other opportunities that they thought were you know, better for them. But the guys that we actually recruited that are no longer here, they weren't a good fit from the jump. Now, size-wise, strength-wise, whatever it may be, yeah. Um, so I think we've been more intentional about recruiting specific guys. Same thing with the staff. You know, when you start having mass staff turnover, your philosophy changes. You know, um, when I first started this deal, I wanted to make sure I went out and got a coach with flash, right? So when he walked in the position room, um, the guys fully understood you know, man, this coach is coach at X, Y, and Z. Um, that always wasn't the best fit. You know, not a knock to anyone or not bad or, 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 or didn't work out, but now it's about the right fit, right? It's the right fit for our kids. It's the right fit for Marshall. It's the right fit for Huntington. It's the right fit for this region conference. Um, yeah, does it matter, you know, the, the, the experience level? Yeah, that matters. Um, but just because you've coached at X, Y, and Z big school doesn't mean you're a great fit for Marshall. Um, so that's where I've kind of changed a little bit. Um, comes through self-reflection a little bit, and it comes through wanting to improve. You know, you ask the players all the time to go out and improve and improve and improve, and sometimes you got to do that yourself as a head coach. You got to look at, okay, what have I done well? What have I? What do I need to improve on now? How do I improve on that? You know, some of the things are within my realm. You know, some of the things are outside of my realm. Um, and being able to embrace all of that, I think, has really helped. I took astronomy four times, so I get it. Um, <laughs> but uh, w w when you talk about coaching turnover, um, one of the guys that, that has been consistent on the staff, John Galante, um, you know, on special teams, how important is it to have con consistency on the staff in that regard um, in a position that, that is often overlooked but, but is still important? Yeah, well, I think if you look over our tenure, um, we've been really good on special teams. And I think sometimes it gets overshadowed because it's special teams, right? It's – you know, you punt, you kick, and, you know, sometimes you're good, sometimes you're not. But what Coach Galante has been able to do, um, he's been able to kind of build some consistency in that lane. And I think what you start to see is the younger players who start in that lane or in that role, the more consistent they can be, even though they may become older and they may not play as much on special teams, the pieces or the parts of special teams that they do or are involved in, they take a lot more serious and they have a lot more continuity. They also are able to spread the word to the new guys that, hey, this got me on the field. You know, this allowed me to play. This allowed me to kind of understand the speed of the game. And what it does is when you bring in these, you know, transfers or whatever it may be, sometimes they did not play 
special teams at the place they, they've been at. So when you have the consistency there, now Coach Galante can say, okay, this player fits this role. When you show a player his role and show him how he can improve in that role, you got a chance to get complete buy-in. And I think that's what – um, you know, having Coach Galante and that consistency in that department has done for us. Um, I don't know, this will be a cotton question, the last time we've had an All-American at special teams. Um, it's It's been a while. I know, you know Jaden ended up moving on, but um, it's been a while. And I think that speaks to the consistency that we've been able to develop in that that unit, um, and now they got a chip on their shoulder, right? You, you got an All-American, you know, player, whatever, whatever position he is, um, the players involved in that are, are pretty pretty bought into it as well. So um, I'm excited about, you know, the continued uh, growth in that area. Um, the one thing I think he's done a really good job of, and maybe because um, I'm a special teams guy and I've kind of um, helped mold him, a lot of times in special teams, you want to change and have an answer. Change this, change this, change this. Well, when you do that, well, the players have to deal with that. Uh, what he's done is he's been able to slightly adapt here, slightly adapt there, but our core philosophy has stayed the same, which has allowed more players to play and to play at a high level. Um, and that's when you get that type of consistency, especially in special teams, because you only get, you know, a portion of that time. Um, and a lot of guys don't do it. You know, they didn't do it in high school, didn't do it at their other school. Um, so when you have that type of consistency, you start to see the production we're having. Coach, uh, I know it's kind of like the whiteboard there. You wipe the slate clean, starts all over here. But from a, an experience and leadership standpoint, what does excite you about, you know, the young men that uh, return for you? Yeah, um, it's really interesting. Um, so all the guys that came back, I told them, I don't want you to be a leader. So, you know, the, the Logans, the Stephen Dix, I don't want you to be a leader. What I want you to do is have leadership responsibilities because in today's age, leaders or leadership is hard, and it's actually a scary word, right? You know, I got to be a leader. That means I got to do stuff right all the time. I got to confront a guy. And sometimes if a guy doesn't have that in him, it's hard for him to be that. And then when you tag him that or you put that on his helmet or you – Pin it on his back. Now he's living uncomfortable, and he doesn't get to perform at the at the level that he should. Um, so what we've done is we've told the guys that returned and the older guys. Some of the transfers are older guys. They've seen it done, you know, at other places. We told them you, you got to have leadership responsibility. What that means is you don't have to fix the problem, but you got to identify it. You don't have to necessarily say something to a guy but you got to set the example. So when I say this is how it's done, I can say you should be following Logan Osborne. Sometimes in today's era, it's hard to confront a peer, right? Because you're going to tell me to do X, Y, and Z, but we was just hanging out, you know, eating pizza, drinking beer yesterday, and you didn't say anything then. You know, so it's hard. You know, when I grew up, there were leaders. Guys said, shut up, you shut up. Um, some guys have that. Owen Porter was a guy that had that. Eli Neal was a guy that had that. So I've taken that responsibility off the guys. What I've told them is I want you to have the responsibility when you see something's not going right, communicate that with someone in leadership, myself, BA, another coach. Now, we can address it. When you see something that you don't think is to the standard, if you don't feel comfortable addressing it, communicate that with me. But let you and your actions be the standard. So all, I, all I'm asking you to do is be yourself. Be yourself every single day. Now, I can tell a freshman – you know, we can tell Chase and Clark, hey, you should be studying like Stephen Dix is. I can tell Sean Rouse, you should be studying like Logan Osborne. And he can see that rather than, you know, Logan saying, well, you got to study like me. And he's like, well, you couldn't have been studying because you were playing video games with me last night. Now, he doesn't know that he went back to the room and did three hours of film. But those are the things that I think allow our players to play free. And I think sometimes being able to play free is better than, hey, you're a captain or you're a leader. Um, I think today's world's changing. You know, everyone is individualized. Everybody's got their own brand, their own Instagram, Twitters. Um, so we've taken that responsibility off the guys. Now, byproduct, if you're a leader, you're going to have leadership qualities, right? That's what you naturally are going to do. Um, but as soon as you tag that word, sometimes it shells guys up. Um, so I'm trying to take the reins off and let guys be themselves. And typically, the type A personalities, the leadership personalities will naturally, you know, kind of float to the top. Um, with that, 
the coaches got to have more hands-on leadership, you know. Um, you know, you always say a player-led team is, is a good team, and I believe that. Um, but a player-pushed team by the coaches is not good. So me saying you have to be a leader, you have to say something, that's not good. But me allowing you the freedom to say something when needed, to communicate with me when you don't feel comfortable, will give you the confidence to speak up more often, will give you the confidence to be more yourself, and ultimately I think we get a player-led team. Coach, can you talk a little bit um, simplistically, I guess, about the quarterback room now with the new coordinator and, and how you think that will shake out? Yeah, I think it's probably the, uh, the best opportunity for all of them, right, because nobody knows the system. Um, they've all played, you know what I mean, so they've all been in the game except Ja'Kai. Um, they've all played. They've all been through a season, whether here or somewhere else, um, and they're all starting from scratch. And I think that's the beauty of it because now it's not – well, you got bank reps or you got banked uh, memories, excuse me, memories from, you know, X, Y, and Z practice or game or this is your favorite play or you're comfortable with this concept over that concept. Um, so it's really up to them. And I think as a player, that's what you want, right? You know, uh, Cole, Braylon, um, Colin, they all get an opportunity to go out and take what's theirs. And no one really has a leg up because no one has played in the system. Um, no one has played for Coach Deggy, you know, so it's not like, well, hey, I know Coach Deggy likes this or this is his type of personality. Um, so I think it's probably as good an opportunity in the country, you know, when you talk about really coming in, everybody starting from ground zero, everybody having talent, everybody having played. Now everyone is up to you. Do you study at night? Do you watch extra film? Do you get extra throwing sessions in? Um, do you ask more questions? Are you consistent? Are you executing? Instead of, well, you know, last year he was the starter and he played 14 games and remember he battled us back in this one drive. We well, don't have that. Um, and I think that, that opportunity is what players look for. All righty. Thank you all very much. Yep. Thank you, guys. Look forward to seeing you guys at practice um, this spring and um, obviously um, – the spring game coming up as well. Really excited about that. So, thanks, guys. Go Herd. What's going on? Well, Coach, I guess I'll start. Uh, as Coach Huff was leaving, we were talking about the quarterback room and how that will be impacted by having a new coordinator. Can you just kind of run us through your process of getting to know them all and what, what you expect? Well, we brought two, obviously, two new ones in from the portal. Uh, brand new freshman who graduated early, Ja'Kai Long. Um, and so, we'll kind of revamp the room so to speak. Um, we have Cole in there as you know, and, and Colin, who, who are great kids. Um, both of them have flashed since I've been here, um, showing some good things. Um, Cole's, you know, obviously he's got some ability. Um, there's a reason why he's here, um, because when he really does, when he wants to do things the right way, he's pretty special. Um, but he's also got some development left to do, right? And then Colin's extremely smart, and so he can get, he can get the ball where it needs to go usually on time. And so he's picked up the system relatively fast. And obviously, Ja'Kai's a uh, young freshman. And, and for a freshman, obviously, he's done uh, some, some, some really good things, too, um, just in the short amount of time that we've been together. Um, but he's, he's very, very talented, uh, has, a, has a, a lead our talent, in my opinion. Um, it's just getting to know me, getting to know the system, getting comfortable with college football. You know, I'm, com I'm kind of on Ja'Kai all the time because he'll casually, like, leave the pocket sometimes. And I'm like, dude, you have no idea. These these dudes are monsters trying to kill you now, and uh, and it's gonna it's gonna feel a little bit different when they get their hands on you. And so um, he's got he's he's having to learn through and, and grow through that kind of stuff. Um, but but those three guys have been awesome to work with. And then obviously Braylon um, is here as well. Um, and this dude is like an athletic freak. Um, he's big. He's fast. He's talented. It's just a new system for him. And that's kind of. You know, for everybody, you know, and there's 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 a there's a little bit of a um, um, growth development in the, in, in the scheme of just learning how I do things, the drop mechanics that I teach, how I read certain plays, the timing and the rhythm of the concepts, and when the ball's supposed to be delivered. Um, them knowing me and, and 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 getting used to the way I teach and and how I want things done. Um, you know, obviously it's going to be a process, but I'm pretty excited where you know, how we started and, uh, and excited about, like, you know, the projection of those guys and, and what, what, how, how talented the room can be, you know, as, as, as they continue to grow. 
Um, and then obviously, you know, come in the summer, you'll have Mitch come in the summer and add another piece to that. And so, and, and the, to be honest with you, the quarterback room, they're all a little bit different. You know what I mean? So they all bring something, something different to the table in a sense that, you know, if, if Cole is your starter, you may look a certain way. If Braylon's your starter, you may look a little bit different. If Mitch is your starter, you may just look a little bit different than both of those guys. So each of them have strengths and weaknesses. So whoever ends up coming out on top and gives us the best chance to win and score points, you know, obviously you cater your offense to those guys and their strengths. Coach talked a little bit about fit as far as bringing people in, coaches in. So what made Marshall a fit for you, and why are you confident that you're a fit for Marshall? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, and that was really my, uh, my pitch in the portal recruiting. Because right when I took the job, um, obviously there was a big push to go try to find transfers to fill roster needs. And so the recruiting pitch I used was, why did I, why did I choose Marshall? You know, why did I leave, you know, in my opinion, some of my best friends in the business, um, a head coach that I believed in, um, maybe some uh, – some other resources that, that were a little more um, stable, if you will. Why would I come to Marshall in a small town in West Virginia that I've never been to um, over staying? And so I, I told the transfers the same thing that, that, uh, that I'm going to tell you right now is, is I chose Marshall for, for a lot of reasons. One, there's an edge to this town and an edge to this university that I really like, and it's a tough edge. All right, so it reminds me a lot of where I grew up in a small oilfield town um, where I had, you know, coaches and, and, and friends and, and families that I grew up with that worked in the oil field or that were coaches that, you know, you had to be tough to survive in this, those type of places. And to me, like Marshall's one of those places. Like, you got to be a tough, you got to be a tough dude to come in here and, uh, and survive Marshall. Um, and then the other part is, like, I wanted, to, I wanted to go to a place where you expected to win. And so I know, like, if you talk to a lot of people around, um, around the community, around college football, around who's ever worked here, coached here, played here, you know, hey, you know, sometimes it can get rough uh, when you're not winning. Well, that's, that, that inspires me because I don't want to go to a place where, you know, six and seven is acceptable. All right? So if, if six and seven is acceptable, then why are we spending so many, so many hours up here trying to win games? All right? So... The expectation, expectation to win, the edge to the city, and an opportunity that somebody like Coach Huff gave me an opportunity to go bet on myself. It was the same, was the same verge that I, I told those transfers. All right, do you want to have an opportunity to come bet on yourself and prove to the, to the world that you're better than, than what you are? Uh, do you want to come to a place where there's tough people with a tough mindset that's going to make you a tough, tougher person? And do you want to come play for a place that expects you to win? If you do, then Marshall is a place for you. You know, since the t from, from the time you got here, obviously the fourth quarter program goes throughout the winter. Um, what were maybe your uh, initial observations um, from, from just watching the guys go through an off-season program like that to, to lead into something like spring ball? Yeah, and, uh, you know, I think our guys do, um, BA, our strength coach and our head coach, obviously do a great job of implementing a, 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 a system that's really going to challenge our kids. And, and it kind of goes back to what I just talked about. One of the most exciting things about being the OC at Marshall is our kids, because our kids are tough, all right? And our, t our kids can go through a lot of adversity, battle through it, and put themselves in a position to go, to go win strictly off of because, you know, they're going to they're gonna fight through adversity better than the opponent. And I think that's a credit to, uh, you know, obviously the staff that's been in place here that's created that fourth quarter program. Um, I mean, I tell them all the time when we meet as a unit, um, you're going to win games just because you're tougher. You're not going to win all the games because you're tougher, but you're going to win a couple, not because you're executing better, not because the scheme's better, but because you're tougher. And you're tougher because of what you're having to go through and what you're battling through. And so I'm really excited about the kids. I'm really excited that, you know, we finally get to get to spring practice so they can put kind of the hard work on tape um, and kind of reap the rewards of what they've been doing so far. Seth, in your coaching career, how have you kind of implemented your days in football all together? Because you played at the highest level, you know, as a Texas high school guy at Texas Tech, and then, you know, a, a professional player, and then you coached at some, uh, in some nice arenas. You know, how do you try to incorporate all that in and send messages to your kids? Yeah, I think, I think anytime, 
you go through, you know, your journey, you know, you pick or you, you pick up some some things along the way that maybe as a player um, that you went through that you can relate to these guys that are going through it now that you didn't know at the time um, that you were having to go through something hard and you battled through it, or uh, maybe you fell down or you fell on your face. And uh, so I, I give the story all the time to the kids is like when I was in the CFL, um, I had an opportunity to go, you know, make them really put my stamp on that league and become a starter. Um, and I had an opportunity and that opportunity, I let it get away from me, not because I wasn't ready, not because I didn't work hard, not because I wasn't um, intentional with my play. I let that opportunity go because I put too much pressure on myself, right? And I overthought things. And I tried to make too much happen versus just kind of trusting my prep and, and, and trusting my work and trusting everything I've done in the off season um, and going to play and playing fast and free. And so I give them that example all the time because you can work hard. Everybody works hard, but that doesn't guarantee you success. Like you gotta go out there and be yourself and execute and allow yourself to execute, all right? And, uh, and so there's simple, you know, things along the way, you know, like you said, my dad was a high school football coach. I was raised by coaches that loved kids, challenged kids, um, and, and they were educators, right? They didn't do it for anything other than, you know, the, the sole fact of getting a kid to reach his goals and dreams, okay? So that's like, those are the guys that raised me. So like the word coach means something more than just like, hey, I get to put my name on a website. Everybody knows who I am because I'm an OC at the Division One place. No, coach means like, you, 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 you said you were going to do something for that kid, all right? So you're doing everything you can to make sure you maximize that opportunity that he has success, all right, on and off the field, okay? And then you go, <laughs> you play in college football, so you get to experience all the highs and lows of college football because there is highs and lows. Adversity hits as soon as the ball snapped. Um, and then you go in the NFL and you get around people like Matt Ryan who are just unbelievable professionals, you right? You see them, how they approach today and what makes them special. So you add that to your game. And then, like you said, I've been around, you know, Clay Helton, uh, Mike Jinks, uh, Graham Harrell, uh, who's probably my biggest mentor, um, Lane Kiffin. All those guys bring something a little bit different to the table, and you kind of take what you think is good, kind of add it to your game and put your own flavor on everything that you want to do. You know, when you talk about day one of spring practice, um, you know, is there a you know set the tone factor to what's going to happen out there at four o'clock to kind of get guys in in the mindset to make the most out of these fifteen practices? Oh, oh yeah, you always got to set the tone day one. Um, but what I tell them all this is is this is is we don't we don't deviate from our philosophy just because the environment changes. Like that's called a pretender. All right, we've been contending for a championship the moment I got here, the moment we stepped on the turf for fourth quarter, every time you go in the weight room. All right, the, 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 the philosophy doesn't change. Right? I tell them all the time, I don't care who's calling the plays. It could be me, it could be Coach, Coach Krill, it could be Aaron Dobson, it could be Charles Huff. It doesn't matter who calls the plays or what the play's called. Your mentality and your expectation to score defeats everything. That's what wins games. And so we're trying to do a great job of, of challenging the mentality here to no matter where the ball's put, you can put it down on a, on a court, the street, the turf, the grass, it does not matter. If that ball's put down and we got a chance to go score, the expectation is we better do it. Thank you very much, Coach. We've got Coach Jason Seymour, defensive coordinator. I will pass around the mic for questions. Hi, guys. Well, Coach, you know, obviously you got a couple of big names that you have to replace, but just in general, talk about your returners and who may emerge as the next Owen Porter, Eli Neal kind of guy. Uh, yeah, we don't we don't necessarily know that yet. We got a lot of new faces, a lot of a lot of transfers, guys that have, were injured last year that are going to get a chance to compete, uh, things like that. And, um, obviously, uh, you can you can replace players, but I don't know if you can replace the leadership of guys like like Owen Porter and, and Eli Neal and Micah. You know those guys have been mainstays in a really good defense for a long time. So it's not necessarily about replacing them. It's more about you know finding who's going to be ready and dependable and and who uh, earns the job in the spring. So this spring's a little different than last year. We had a lot of established guys last year, guys that played a bunch of football. Um, 
this year we have some good players to lean on. We have some, some, some guys that, that are returning that have been productive in the program for a long time. Obviously, we'll lean on those guys. But uh, this spring's more about uh, having true competition, um, trying, to find, uh, trying to find ways to, to build the, the, the scheme and the menu for next year. Um, when, when we got here last spring, uh, we didn't change a lot. You know what I mean? There was no need to change a lot. Uh, we had a lot of guys with a lot of experience that kind of ran that system for a long time. Um, exciting to find out what the, what the new faces can do, but also how we have to, to mold and shape the defense to, to put guys in a position to make plays and utilize their skill sets. So uh, it'll, it, it, it'll be uh, exciting for me to see the guys compete. You know what I mean? Just to see the guys compete, um, not necessarily in a in a in a mode to start to you know build leadership and the culture piece and stuff. That was kind of the focal point last year. This spring is more about uh, evaluation and, and finding out who those guys are going to be. To your point, you know what I mean? We got we got holes to fill. So uh, it's an exciting time for the guys. We're going to have lots of opportunity, and it's an exciting time for me to see, uh, see what kind of toys we have to play with on College Football Saturday next year. So we're excited about it. And Coach, kind of to build off of that, you know, following year, you know, year two, for you, does, does the philosophy change based on what you're trying to do, or does it change a little bit with, as you mentioned, some of the toys you have here? Sure. Or is there a happy medium you're trying to, trying to reach where you can do more and maybe take advantage of what you have? Um, at the end of the day, I think uh, a lot of the X's and O's brilliance that we get credit for or get, or get uh, scrutinized for is, is uh, it's about the players. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter how much football I know. It doesn't matter what, what scheme I necessarily like and things like that. Your guys have to be able to execute, right? So it's, it's twofold in the evaluation process. What can they do athletically? Right? What are their body types? What can they do? Are they good at blitzing? Are they good at coveraging? Are they good at, you know, what technique can they possibly do, right? And build the scheme around the players that you have. And then from there, uh, what, is, what, is their, what is their football knowledge? You know what I mean? I think, I think I'm guilty like most coordinators. I, I, you want to do a lot. You know what I mean? You want to you wanna be as multiple as you can. Uh, you see a lot of offense nowadays in college football. so. The multiplicity that you can bring is always going to help you. Uh, so we got to find out what our guys can do, and then how much football can they handle. So, so we'll try to, from a from a standpoint, you got to walk the fine line of developing fundamentals and technique, but also trying to inst install the schematic X's and O's. Um, so we got to we got to find that fine line in spring ball. That's that's the goal. Um, we don't necessarily uh, have a firm grasp on. Um, some of these guys that have come in here that have played a lot of football, some of them have not, right? So, so what is their what is their football intelligence level? You know what I mean? Can can you put a lot on those guys, right? Um, a blessing for us is we had some injuries in the secondary last year, so so some of the young guys like like Ian Foster and those guys got to play a lot towards the end of the year, um, so they were able to gain some game experience coming into the spring. Um, so we'll see. We'll see where it goes. Uh, we'll we'll be different. Uh, we will be. We'll probably be more multiple in terms of, of what we do, coverage wise and blitz pattern wise and things like that. Um, but again, it's all about it's all about what they can get executed and what we can get taught. So uh, we we have a plan for what we want to install and what we want to get in. But uh, whether we reach that or not is up to the execution on the field because you, you don't want to just you know put a bunch of defensive scheme in to put a bunch of defensive scheme in. You want it to get executed properly, um, and also have a foundation for fall camp of of teaching material and, and technique and things like that. So we're excited about seeing how far we can get. Revisiting just just something you said um, you know earlier, and you know in, in coming into this year when you're not you know when you are changing some things um, as far as scheme, is that beneficial um, for a from a coordinator standpoint, um, kind of having a fresh slate to work with? Um, yeah, there's positives for sure. Um, and there's things that I, I believe in um, that we didn't necessarily get to do last year, didn't need to do necessarily. Um, scheme that I like and I think that uh, 
we have guys that can that can do it, guys that can execute those things, um, and and also uh, you want to go back and address kind of now that you have a have a year of of film under the sun in the sun belt and, and how guys attack what we do. So going back in the self scout piece was also a big part of it. Uh, what do we do base defensive wise that that people put stress on the defense and put guys in conflict and. Um, What's what's hard to adjust to the motions that we that we see in, in the offensive structures that we see, um, so so it's a positive in that you're starting with a fresh slate and you can install some schemes that maybe relieve some of those things, you know what I mean? Um, being a heavy quarters base team uh, and things like that in the past, uh, you get every quarters beater under the sun every every motion and mismatch that, that people can possibly create. So looking at, you know, new creative ways to, to maybe make the defense easier for the guys to adjust to. Um, and, all, and also, you know, marry that with the skill sets that we have. So, so I view it as a positive for sure. Um, so, so we'll install some of those things in the spring, things that I think will help us in terms of what we put on film in the past and uh, what we're going to see going into the season next year. Any further questions for Coach? All righty. Thank you very much, Coach. Thanks, guys. Yep. Uh, couldn't ask for better weather on the first day of spring ball. We'll be outside, so ready to get to work and, and get a feel for our new guys. Questions? I talked with Coach just a little bit about the consistency um, that you guys have been able to develop on the special team side. Uh, part of that is, you know, being here, you know, for a number of years now. Um, you know, how, how have you kind of seen that that special teams culture uh, change and develop into kind of what you wanted it to be? It's it's improved every year. It's been awesome. Uh, you know, the the players are totally bought into it. Um, Coach Huff makes it uh, a priority in our program, and I think the longer I've been here, I think it's helped. Um, the system is is kind of set. Um, and it's been a lot of fun. You know, last year we definitely got better, still have areas we need to improve in, but it is a lot of fun right now because the guys are into it. Um, and then the f uh, familiarity, you know, helps. You know, the continuity helps, and it's been a lot of fun. So it has gotten a lot better. And Coach Huff is, and, uh, you know, just the staff, the, prior the priority he sets on it has helped a ton. Is this like Christmas for you? Your evaluation process probably got to be different. Like, I want that guy. Or, yeah, he can make something happen for me. You know, are you yeah. the least stressed out coach on the field? I wouldn't say that. Um, you know, it is a fun time because, you know, like we spent, we do all of our off-season stuff, conditioning and stuff like that, but you still don't. There's still a, another level of, of evaluation that has to happen on the football field. Um, you know, but this day in college football, this day and age, there's so many new players on your roster every year. So there's so many questions. Um, and there's a lot of guys that redshirted that are back that you have questions about. And it's a lot of fun to watch um, experience as the best teacher. And all these guys that are back are guys that we're just finding out about. It's so much fun to watch. It is definitely less stressful for me in the spring. Um, and it's a lot of fun to, to watch them. And I try to, I think I mentioned this last year, hang out with the offensive staff and defensive staff and watch every rep with them in, in practice and just watch how guys are improving. And it's in all, it's, it's the only evaluation we get spring, and then we got fall camp, and we're preparing for an opponent. So it's a ton of fun. Love it, and excited to today and Saturday for the first day of pads, and on through spring ball to watch all these guys and see what they're capable of. Coach, does the, the portal kind of help you too with uh, trying to find talent and plugging in talent, and you know going to find a good kick or good punter? Is that are they a little more available out there now? Uh, yeah, I think the um, it, it will help more for the core players on special teams right now. Um, we haven't used it for a specialist quite yet. Um, we've evaluated some guys in the portal of specialists, but um, you know we had such a young group of specialists when I got here, and we've been you know really invested in their development. So we haven't used it for specialists, but the core group of players it helped us a ton last year um, with the linebacker group we had, and we had a ton of linebackers we got um, from the portal. Um, you think about one guy we got from TCU, Landon Watson, who's back going to compete for a spot on defense. Um, made a ton of plays for me on special teams because he wasn't quite playing a, a ton on defense. Um, so it's helped a lot in those roles, but not necessarily specialists yet. Maybe at returner, um, but for the, for the specialists, not yet, but the core guys, absolutely. Been awesome. 
You know, when you look at special teams from the developmental side of things, you know, guys that are fighting for playing time, you know, I think of guys, you know, a guy like Sean Salas obviously moved on. But, yeah. um, you know, how integral is that to um, – from the competition standpoint to say, hey, you can fight for playing time, you know, here on the field in these reps? Yeah, I mean, it goes back to your first, uh, your first question. I mean, just with the continuity we have on special teams and the priority Coach Huff puts on it here – um, everybody knows it's, it's a huge part of what we do. We take a lot of pride in special teams. Um, so everybody that walks in the door, they're hearing about it the first meeting that they're in. Um, so they know it's, it's almost more than an opportunity to play. It's, it's really a pride aspect for our team. Um, but it does provide an opportunity to play. Um, and we've had – our players have been great. Salas is a great example of guys that fought for playing time and earned it that maybe weren't starting on offense or defense yet. Um, and, you know, it's helped us a ton. When you have an All American, um, you, when you, you your system has produced an All American, um, d does that put uh, pressure on it to follow up or just to keep the keep the same standard? Uh, no, no, I wouldn't say pressure. I think the coaching staff and the players at that position, I think it makes them more competitive. I think that um, you know what he achieved last year, talking about Jaden, uh, was phenomenal, and we wish he would have stayed and wish him the best. Um, but it kind of lights a fire under the guys that were taking reps behind him and the guys that we've got um, that we've added to our football team, that this is the standard of the mark we met last year. How can we improve it? I think it's – I'm excited for, you know, specifically kick return but punt return as well for those guys to be motivated to one up or do, you know, as good if not better. Just to kind of follow up on that, you find it easier now instead of trying to convince someone, you know, if you need help, that you've got guys coming to you saying, hey, coach, I kind of want to be on your unit as well. I mean, are you getting more buy-in before you have to even have to say a word? Oh, yeah. Um, it happened a lot more last year. It was happening the first year, but last year it was uh, my office door. There was, there was knocks every day after practice. You know, coach, can I watch a little bit of this? Can I watch a little bit of that? I think just, um, especially for the young, we played a lot more younger players last year. Um, we played a lot of freshmen, a lot of freshmen on special teams. And um, the guys that saw that, you know, started to want to, to buy into that and, and get a piece of it and get on, on teams, and it's helped. And, you know, so, yes, and the buy-in has been awesome. Players want to be on it, and it's been great. It's been a lot of fun. Any further questions for Coach? I know it surprises you that I have another question. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love your question. Um, You've been a part of some coaching turnover here at Marshall. Um, how, how important is, is establishing some, um, you know, chemistry between the coaches um, in, in a period like spring ball leading into the rest of the season? Uh, it's very important. Um, you know, even as much as today, we'll do some things on special teams today where we split groups and let other coaches coach a position. I think it's important for them to hear another voice other than mine all the time. Um, you know, your, your tight ends coach, running backs coach, safeties coach will have a huge part in special teams, and I want them meeting with them in the meeting room and then helping them on the field. We'll do a lot of group stuff. So, you know, getting the continuity now with not just me but the players that they'll be coaching and watching all year is, is so important. And it's been, I would say, all the new guys that we have are as into it as, as the last guys, if, if not more so. And they're into it and want to help me and want to um, do as much as they can to help on special teams. It's been a lot of, uh, of good for sure. All right. Thank you all very Thanks. much. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yep.